Day 22. Day 22 in 30 days of ham radio. We're getting there. We're more than two thirds of the way through it and we're getting close to the end. And uh, this has been a really fun series. I've really enjoyed it. And uh, I, I thanks, thank you guys for all the feedback you've given about it. Today, we're going to be trying some 220 repeaters around the North Texas area. I put my 220 antenna. This is actually my Edfong tri-band antenna right, right there. That's the Edfong tri-band antenna. That's the mast I had it on for several years when it was tied to the fence over here. Um, and I've mentioned in previous videos that I don't have an antenna up at the house right now, so I just kind of leaned that up. There's no wind today. I just kind of leaned it up against the shack, fed it with my Mezzi and Plony Pota Flex, and I've got it tied into my Anytone Tribander radio right now. So we're going to try to hit some 220 repeaters this morning. There used to be, at one point in time, now I haven't had 220 in the truck for a while. We did the, we did the driving around video uh, last week about two meter repeaters and I keyed up three of the best two meter repeaters in the area. So far I've found, I've actually done a little bit of testing before I hit go in the camera this morning and I've, so far I've found four repeaters that are working. There used to be about 10 or 11 repeaters across DFW, across Dallas-Fort Worth, a little bit north, a little bit south, kind of all over the place uh, across the Dallas-Fort Worth area. And if you had a mobile radio running 25, 30 watts, which is what we're running today, if you had a mobile radio in the truck and you were driving around, you could pretty much get into any of those repeaters from anywhere in the area. So if you were way over on the east side of Fort Worth, you could key the Dallas repeater. If you were in the heart of downtown Dallas, you could key the Denton repeater and the Fort Worth repeater and some of the southern repeaters because the noise floor on 220 is so low. And regrettably, I have not had 220 in the truck for a long time. So I haven't been on there in a while. It is one of my favorite bands. It's absolutely one of my favorite bands. I really like working 220 repeaters and 220 simplex, especially at a crowded environment like Dayton Hamvention. We had the idea to work some 220 simplex last year. Not everyone has a 220 radio, so but there were people on there. We talked to them and it, it, was, it was really good. It wasn't as crowded as the two meter simplex frequencies were, especially with those guys who are running Yezu System Fusion on some of the two meter simplex frequencies that I think they were on the wrong frequency, but I don't remember. I don't know what the official system fusion simplex frequency is for two meters. I should look that up. But today we're going to be talking about 220 repeaters. I'm going to try to get into as many as I can throughout the Dallas-Fort Worth area. See if we got any anybody out there monitoring and conversations and whatnot. I've always said that there's a lot of people who monitor 220 but never key up. So if you throw your call sign out, you might be pleasantly surprised about who comes back to you. However, that was it's been several years since I've tried it, so looking forward to trying this out so let's go all right we've got the screen recorder going here and i'm showing you repeater book this is repeaterbook.com and i drilled down to texas and drilled down to 220 so these are all the 220 repeaters supposedly in the area now you can see on the right hand side of the screen here there's green dots and there's red dots the red dots are offline repeaters so they know that they're offline and i don't know how they determine this that one that's orange i don't know what that means so, and you can see some of them have All-Star, some of them have Echolink, like that one in Cedar Park. Cedar Park, New Hope in Travis County, it has All-Star Echolink, that's cool. And this one in Greenville, which is too far away for me, that both of those are too far away for, for me to get into from the, from the Grapevine area. Those are, but those are all, you can see all those ones in Harris County are red right now, they're offline. So the, the, the three best 220 repeaters in the area used to be the Denton repeater at 224.92, the Dallas repeater at 224.800, and the Fort Worth repeater at, well, the Fort Worth repeater at 224.94 was good. It wasn't great. The, actually, the, uh, the Arlington Club at 224.800 used to be really good. So those three repeaters, the Denton, Dallas, and Arlington, you could key up, you could get into them from anywhere. They were really far-reaching. I just tried to key up all three of those repeaters, and I'm not getting into it. My antenna is probably about, 15 feet in the air right now at the base and that should be more than and I'm pushing about 25 or 30 watts out of this Anytone radio that should be more than plenty to get into those repeaters but I'm just not hitting some of them I've checked my settings done several different things and just for whatever reason I'm not able to get into those three repeaters right now so either they've been taken down or that the repeater book showed them with a green dot it shows them online but they're clearly not online if I can't key them from this area. I keyed up one of the Arlington, there's another repeater in Arlington besides 224.800, which is the one I was used to. There's one owned by David, KB5WB. Now, he was one of the guys on single sideband two meter with us the other night. He lives in the area and he drives around for work a lot. 
That repair is at 223.900, and I just had a conversation with someone on that system. I wasn't quite ready yet for the camera programming repeaters, and I heard someone. KC5 HWB in Grapevine. 223.900 Arlington repeater. This is David's repeater, KB5WB, and someone just came back. Uh, morning there, Grapevine. It's uh, origin Cisco. Cisco. Oh, you know what? He might have this tied into NCTC. N5RHF, was it? Uh, KC5HWB. Yeah, it's November 5, Romeo Hotels in November. I go by Sarge. I'm out of Cisco, Texas. Okay, okay. Uh, yeah, I'm guessing this repeater's tied into the NCTC system. Full climbing into the system, that's for sure. That's not what I asked. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah, you sound good out here, too. I was doing some... Uh, Programming of my radio for 220 repeaters in the area and uh, I was keying up this one and this is one of the few that I can actually get into so but uh, but if you're in Cisco I, I assume you're talking on a linked repeater one of the linked repeater systems, right? Yeah, I'm talking on a repeater that's out of uh, Eastland, Texas. Okay, okay, good deal. Well, thanks for coming back to me. I'm, I'm doing some radio programming right now just uh, trying to see what is and is not uh, online. <laughs> hey, Roger, Roger, I hear you on that one, man. All right, thanks for coming back to me. N5RHN, KC5HWB. So he's not on 220. He's on NCTC is the North Central Texas Connection, and they have repeaters linked all the way from, like, I mean, all over Dallas-Fort Worth, but out, as far out east as Paris, maybe farther, Bonham and Paris out there, and then as far out west as, like, Abilene. Uh, it's been a while since I looked at their Mac, but they have, have a lot of linked uh, repeaters, RF linked repeaters. They also have All-Star now. They, they added All-Star a few years back. So it's a really good repeater system if you want to find activity on repeaters in this area. I was trying to find activity on 220 today, and I got excited when he came back to me, but all right, let's try the next one. So 223.900 is the Arlington repeater. 224.84 I found, and that is a repeater on Cedar Hill. Now there's two or three repeaters on Cedar Hill. One of them is closed, and this one is this one is at 22 Cedar Hill. Cedar Hill is the highest point in North Texas. That's where all the broadcast TV antennas are. And there's a couple of ham clubs that were, over the years, able to get actual ham radio repeaters up on those really tall towers. So the ground, the, the ground level, the, uh, the height of ground level at that location is higher than most places in this area. And then there's several 150 to 400 foot towers on top of that hill as well. So this is a Cedar Hill repeater. KC5 HWB testing on the Cedar Hill 220 repeater. Not so much, uh, not so good on that one right there. So the next one I saved was 224.0. I believe that is the Colony repeater. There's a, a town uh, north of Dallas, south of Denton called The Colony, and they have a pretty active club. Last I, last I knew, last I talked to them a couple of years. It's been a couple of years since I talked to them also, but they have a 220 repeater and it's online right now. KC5 HWB testing on the Colony 220 repeater. And that sounds like an all-star courtesy tone that is not currently connected to anything. I've talked on this repeater in the past and been talking to someone and said, hey, I didn't realize that you had a 220 radio. And he goes, oh, no, I'm on the two-meter side. So a lot of times they have their 220 repeater linked into one of their other repeaters up there. They've got a good two-meter two repeater. Sometimes they're linked into the Denton repeaters. Uh, the Colony Club is a, like an offset of the Denton Club. So a lot of, a lot of members are members of both. KC5 HWB testing on the Colony 220 repeater. Anyway, that's the courtesy tone you hear in an all-star system when it's not connected somewhere. So maybe I should connect my all-star in there, start using that a little bit. And then I think I had one more. No, th those were the three. So Arlington, KB5 WB in Arlington, Cedar Hill, and the Colony are the three that I was testing. Now, if we go over here, there used to be one in Louisville that I could get into, and I couldn't key it up this morning for some reason. 224.080, so let's try that real quick. KC5 HWB. Nope, not keying that one, so I don't know what, and it shows, repeater book shows that one to be online. 224.080, right here, with a minus offset of 222.48, and a uh, uh, CTCS of 110.9. KC5 HWB testing. I used to be able to key that repeater from an HT standing here in the backyard. So I don't understand why that one's 
not working this morning. That one should certainly be working. And then uh, 224.920, that used to be very keyable from the backyard as well. Again, same, cur same uh, PL tone, KC5HWB testing. Not, uh, not hearing anything over there either. So for whatever reason, some of these 220 repeaters are offline. I, I tested the SWR on this antenna and it's fine, so I, I assume that everything's good with this antenna, but it's possible that I just, I don't think my height is an issue, especially since I'm getting into three different repeaters with no problem, and that Louisville repeater is closer to me than all the rest of them. Louisville and Arlington, the Arlington one that's offline, the Arlington one I hit is fairly close, the Arlington one that's offline is fairly close, and then the, oh here's one in Irving, 224.16. There we go. There's Irving. Well, that sound is really good. KC5HWB testing on the Irving 220 repeater. That sounds really good. Not much static in the background. That's, uh, oh, that's, uh, that's Fred's repeater, W5MGM. I know that guy. KC5HWB on uh, 224.16 W5MGM repeater. He's probably not used to people keying up 220. We need to get some more 220 action going on in North Texas, guys. I know I've said that a lot. I've said that a lot during the series that we need to be on simplex more. We need to be on the repeaters more. And now I'm saying we need to be on 220 more. More ham active is a good thing. More ham radio active is a good thing. If you are interested in 220, put a comment in this video. Let me know, if you're, especially if, if you're in the North Texas area. If you are around this area and on 220, let me know, and I will, I'm, I'm going to put this radio back in my truck. I'm actually sort of kind of waiting on that Kenwood and that new Kenwood radio to come out because it'll be a tri-banner, the DM750, but at the same time, I wouldn't mind having a dedicated 220 radio in my truck because what I used to do with this Anytone, this Anytone is a tri-bander. This is the Anytone AT5888UV3. Now, I did a video about this one a while back. I said the best mobile tri-band radio that's out right now. I believe RNL Electronics is the exclusive dealer for this radio right now. I will put a link in the description below if you're interested in it. The one on Amazon, some people came by that video and said, oh, the one on Amazon's cheaper. The one on Amazon is a dual band. It is not a tri-band, or at least at, what, at the time of that recording, when I recorded the video about this, that's how it was. That was a dual band radio. So for whatever reason, several of the Chinese companies, they like to put the same number on different versions of the radio. Like for instance, TYT has one called a TH9000 that comes in, I think, four different bands. It'll, I don't remember if they do six meters or not, but they do two meters, 220, and 440. And they're all TH9000s. And you have to go, and that's the model number, TH9000. And you have to go read on the tag to see what frequency it is. They're all mono band, one frequency, but there's three different bands. Anytone does the same thing. This is a UV3. The AT5888 is the model number. And then the UV2 is the dual band. U, V, and then the Roman numeral 2 is a dual band. UV for UHF, VHF. And the Roman numeral 3 is the tri-band. So just make sure you, if you want the tri-band version, get the UV3. Uh, because the UV2 looks exactly like it. And it just doesn't have 220 in it. Tell me what 220 frequencies you guys monitor, if you monitor anything at all. I'd be curious to see what you have. There is uh, the one at Roston appears to be down right now, or I'm just not getting into it. 224.200 is one on the Roston Tower. I, I spoke about the Roston Tower on my two-meter repeater video the other day, and that one is easily accessible from my hunting lease. So there's many times during hunting season I'm monitoring the 224.200 repeater, and if they have the internet working on that tower, that one also has an all-star connection. So I can connect that into my all-star hub and, and monitor all-star through, through that 220 repeater, which is kind of fun. But I really enjoyed 220. I need to get back into it. I, like, I do like the idea of having a dedicated 220 radio in my truck. So I might just go ahead and put this Anytone back in there, even though I'm planning on getting that Kenwood when it comes out. Because the Kenwood's going to do a lot more than just 220. So I'd like to have a dedicated 220 radio program. All the repeaters in the North Texas area and actually in the Dallas or in the uh, Houston and Galveston area too. Because I get down there a lot. And then I just put it on scan and I'll let it scan through all the 220 repeaters in the area. And when I hear activity, I pick up the microphone. That's how I used to do 220 and I would very much like to get back to it. So let me know what you guys think. Thanks for watching. Let's read some donations today. Okay, as of last night, 
we are up to $4,630 of donations for ARRL Teachers Institute. We had $125 of donations yesterday. And tonight, I'm actually running a special event live stream on the channel. So I'm hoping to get some more donations for that event tonight. And then we're going to talk about the next live stream on tonight's live stream. So you guys tune in. By the time this video posts that you're watching right now, all of that will have happened. So I appreciate you guys who did join the live stream. The notes from the donations yesterday said, In memory of Ronald Wentworth. Didn't give a call sign, but it says, In memory of Ronald Wentworth. So... Keep those donations coming, ARRL.org forward slash 30 days. We're raising money for the Teachers Institute so that uh, Steve, K5ATA, can teach teachers that then take that knowledge back into the classroom and teach students all about amateur radio. 73 guys, we'll see you tomorrow.